stuck. A feeling I ignore temporarily. A feeling I ignore for the simple sake of getting by. My thoughts are, tomorrow's a new day. And today is merely a low place exception. I'll wake up and feel new. I'll wake up and normalize. I'll wake up and productivity will magically increase. That's very rarely the case. More than 7,100 cases have now been confirmed in China, an increase of over 1,000 compared to yesterday. And there are thousands more suspected. Listening is your duty, and staying home is your way to serve. The Minister of Health won't commit to higher wages, but are looking into creating full-time jobs. People need to get the message that this isn't just about them, this is about their neighbors, this is about vulnerable seniors, this is about uh, health workers who are on the front lines trying to keep us all safe. At least 31 residents from a private care home in Montreal have died in uh, the last Canadians month. can and must do their part to keep us all safe. All safe. I miss the noise. Even though I see more people walking outside than I've seen in years, the silence in the streets is deafening. It's full of people wanting to say something, wanting to scream, wanting to cry for help, but they just... Before all this, people had places to go and people to see. There was no time to waste. But now, we walk or drive around with no real destination because all we want to do is fill up time again. Time we never seemed to have before. We always complain that we never had time to do anything before because we had school or work or homework or just something better to do. So it's day one. School is closed for two weeks. We were obsessed with all the noises in our lives that we almost forgot how to live in complete silence with ourselves. Day two. Everything is just still. Everyone is just waiting and thinking and overthinking. I just want to hear the noise again. Okay. Red light means it's recording, right? Okay, lights, camera, action. <laughs> Welcome to hell. Okay, it's not actually hell, you got me, you got me. It's the apocalypse, ah! <laughs> but don't sweat, I'm the protagonist of the story. You can't kill me off that easy. People weren't that great before this. So if you're feeling empathetic or sympathetic, don't. I used to call them out on their shit, but I was the psycho. Karen. I saw you fight an old woman for toilet paper. You fucking hypocrite. I think I saw someone last week, yesterday, this morning, fuck, it's all the same, but I was the last person they saw. Like, I'm so great at this apocalypse thing. Like, why does everyone else suck so bad, you know? So why am I filming this, you ask? What a great question. So glad you asked it. I don't know. I just found you. Look neat. So I guess that makes us friends. Well, at least until your battery dies. How is this more boring than doing nothing? Day three, I talked to the cast today. 
they just make me so happy. But there's always this moment after you hang up and the air is just filled with that silence again. And you're once again reminded of how far away you actually are from each other. When you hang up, it's like you're stuck in this in-between state. And it seems just completely impossible to go right back to what you were doing before the call started because you, you just kind of need a moment to come back to yourself. But in that moment, I've never felt more alone, really. I've been here for five months, 24 days, three hours, 46 minutes, and 31, 32, 33, 34. It's 4.27 a.m. and I'm lying awake in my bed, staring at the dark corner of my room that weirdly looks like an ominous figure watching me restlessly. But I know that it's just my robe that's always there. I'm starting to hear birds chirping outside. The world is waking up and the thought of sleep hasn't even crossed my mind. My dad keeps telling me to use this quarantine to catch up on things I love and to do things that I wouldn't have time for if the world was normal right now, but it feels like all I have time for is having panic attacks at the amount of schoolwork sitting on my desk but not doing anything about it because I'm just so unmotivated. I've never been this unmotivated before. My daily routine consists of the bare minimum of hygiene when I'm lucky enough to get out of bed, one and a half meals that absolutely do not contain any fruits or vegetables, and watching a stupid amount of Netflix while I numbly text my friends how much I miss them. I don't really mean it. That's the sad part. I sleep through most of the day, but at night, at night, I'm awake. I feel like that character in a movie who's standing on a busy street completely still while the world rushes past him. I feel like I'm paused. I never wanted to feel like that again. I used to isolate myself, not talk to people even when they were crying and begging for me to open up. I was a pro at causing people to worry. I mean, I know this quarantine will end with I don't know if this feeling will. I keep digging myself deeper and deeper into this hole where I'm too far for anyone who loves me to reach. I try to throw a rope or a ladder down, but something in me doesn't want it. I like the serenity of the hole. I can't hear the fucking birds chirping in the hole. It takes everything in me not to give in to that feeling, but I just don't have much of me left. I feel like I'm stuck in this same cycle every day, and I barely even want to get out of it at all. It's so much more appealing to just lie awake and stare at the figure in the dark, creepy corner of my room. It's 428. <laughs> He's the fourth roommate I've had. They always get better and leave. I stay here and it's always quiet. I pretty much just sit in bed all day watching movies, except for my scheduled walk around the hospital. I have to go with the nurse too because they won't let me be alone. It's what happens when you're put in isolation and waiting for a lung transplant. I see my family once a week behind a thick glass wall and my friends, my friends stopped visiting a while ago. Day nine. It's like we're really being reminded of how much is out of our control. Like before, I may not have known exactly what was gonna happen tomorrow or the next week, but I knew I was gonna go to school I knew I was going to see my friends, I knew I was going to rehearse and do homework, and even get on the bus. But now none of that is happening. The hospital is overflowing with people, 
and the noise is deafening. All I hear is nurses and doctors rushing around and more and more people coming in every day. They won't even let me leave my room anymore. I didn't think I could miss walking those barren halls. I miss my family. They won't let them visit anymore. But they won't tell me what's going on. The doctors and nurses never take their masks off anymore and the whole hospital feels... It feels off. <laughs> they say I'm too young and they don't want to scare me. But I'm terrified. I, I feel like the world is ending and I'm gonna die. I miss the quiet. It's been 10 months, 12 days, 14 hours, 26 minutes, and 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. I don't know if you all are trapped in this situation. I have my games, my computer, my siblings to have some social interaction with. So I'm set for this. Everyone says the same thing. But we still talk about it for hours so we don't feel alone. We mask it all by pretending we're just looking out for each other, but we really want to hear the noise again. We sit in our rooms day in, day out, waiting to hear somewhere on the news or social media that this is all over, that we can go back to the way things were. But will we be able to live like we did before or even bounce back from this? Or will we just stay stuck forever? It's day 10. The show is canceled. I, I can't believe it. Tomorrow would have been our opening night. <laughs> but it's fine. It's it's fine. It, they had no other choice. But why? Why? It's it's not even postponed. <laughs> like I wish I had known that our last rehearsal would have been our last. I would have stuck around for longer. I would have said goodbye to everyone. I won't even be able to get up on stage in front of my entire grade and hear the audience clap for me as I get up there and get my diploma after working so hard. Now that I think about it, when this is all over, we can go back to our regular lives, work our nine to five jobs, wake up for school and actually head out. How are we going to record this moment in history? The textbooks for future generations where I had to make a small mention of this global moment in mankind's history. Or would it take an entire chapter just to see how people have spent their days nearly dying for scraps of toilet paper. And they binge watched their favorite series for the hundredth time. And they spent their days doing absolutely nothing. Today is one of the harder days. I haven't slept through the night since quarantine started. I just miss my friends so much. And I'm really tired. I'm just really tired of being alone with myself. And I just wish I could take a break from all that sometimes. I'm really scared, and it's in these moments that I miss being in rehearsal the most. I've made a horrible decision. The parking lot has become a war zone. One family is even wearing full hazmat suits. I haven't prepared myself for this. It's absolute chaos. I say a little silent prayer to myself before getting out of my car and I wonder if I should tell my parents I love them. What am I thinking? I'm going grocery shopping. I don't even know what to buy because I didn't make a grocery list, so I just buy everything. I can't think straight. I 
can barely even remember my own name. Toilet paper. I take a deep breath before I turn into the aisle to brace myself for what I'm about to see. There are about 20 people surrounding an employee's restocking the shelf. They're all yelling at him and grabbing as much as they can fit in their carts. I grab three packages of toilet paper before someone tries to fight me for it and I make my way to the front cash. The line for the cash register goes all the way to the back of the store. While waiting in line, I see two elderly women fighting, literally fist fighting over a package of toilet paper. And a lifetime later, I make it to the front of the line. The man in front of me offers the cashier $45 for the hand sanitizer behind the cash. The cashier laughed, but he was dead serious. The apocalypse has begun. I'm about to leave, but I desperately need to use the washroom. As I'm washing my hands, I smile at a woman who's just entered the washroom. She smiles back at me. She seems very calm. The first person I've come across today who wasn't freaking out. Finally, someone normal. I immediately take that back when I realize what she's doing. She's going into each stall and taking all the toilet paper. She suddenly notices me staring and throws two rolls at me. She tells me to take it and run. Don't ever look back. And that's exactly what I do. I sprint to my car as if my life depends on it, which it kind of does. I stuff the $500 of unnecessary groceries into the trunk of my car and I speed home. It's day one and I've already lost my mind. You're a great listener, by the way. I don't have to worry about you interrupting me now, do I? Maybe I'll make this into a game. Make things interesting. Um, okay. So, I guess expressing my feelings about all of this to my best friend is bad. And I should calm down and not make a big fuss out of the situation because people are dying because of the virus. And, well, people are just having it harder than me. My friend died four days ago. She died. D-I-E-D, -E dead. So long. We text our friends saying we miss them even though we don't really remember why we do. Protect life insurance. Life is about tough choices. This isn't one of them. You know, Today is my 21st birthday. Well, aren't you gonna say happy birthday? Thank you. Not much of a birthday, is it? 21 and I still can't leave the house. Imagine that. This all seems a little ironic, don't you think? A touch of bad timing. A little too late. I have insurance. Car insurance, dental, eye care. Because my vision started going a little fuzzy in the ninth grade. But not life insurance. That always seemed like a little too much. A rite of passage I was still too young for. I'm 21 now, so I guess not anymore. And in times like these, I mean, sure, there's a lot to be protected from, especially now. I have a peanut allergy, and when I go to the restaurant, I always make sure to tell the waiter. When I get sick, I always take the antibiotics the doctor prescribes. I'm good. But the world isn't. Nobody's listening. People are protesting in the streets about haircuts and malls closing and God knows what. When entire countries are under lockdown and the elderly are quietly dying in their homes. And so Protect Life Insurance sends me this. As some sort of twisted apology for the world being the way it is. The apocalypse is at my door and I'm still getting life insurance ads. As if it's as important as an N95 or a face shield. You know, they should really call it death insurance. The only thing I'm sure about at this point is that we're all gonna die. Seriously though, cancer, Alzheimer's, falling off a cliff, vaping, axe to the head, you went to a friend's house, 
got fucking wasted. Then you know what he did? Coronavirus. Doesn't make a difference. You ask me, we are all seriously fucked. The mailman still comes every Wednesday and drops off bills and coupons and life insurance ads. Isn't that weird? Maybe just a little? You know what really gets me? What just really gets me? This bitch went to a friend's house during a fucking lockdown, quarantine fucking situation. Got drunk, decided to take a sketchy back road home to avoid getting into trouble. Drove off the road, escaped death. And then he needed to pee. <laughs> and God just said, you know what? It. Natural selection, baby, you're on your own. I got more people to deal with. Whatever. And then he died. This comedian just threw the ass hat into the stream for a cool down. Butt ass naked during a fucking pandemic. Everything happens for a reason. The trees grow to give us oxygen. The snow falls for the making of snow angels. People make mistakes so they can learn from them. Hearts get broken to be able to come back stronger. People die so that others can live. I swear to God, if he hadn't died, I would have killed him. <laughs> I would have coughed all over that sorry asthmatic SOB and... Negativity seems to have taken over the world, and I understand why. Things are bad. Really bad. And there's no denying that. Quarantine was never a frequently used word in my vocabulary, and now it seems to come up in every second sentence. I really don't enjoy the way it feels when it leaves my mouth. As if it's so normal to be saying it, and we're all just supposed to get used to it. I understand why people are upset. I really do. We're all going through this together. Although, even with all the bad, and with humanity showing their true colors, and relationships collapsing, and mental health struggling, I still don't feel as sad as I think I should. You know, I told him not to go. I said to him, but no. He was bored, his family was annoying him, he was done his homework, he needed a break, okay, fair, but then, then... I don't know, put your earbuds in and listen to some music with your door locked like the rest of us, like, like, all of us do and figure out a way to be happy by yourself. Or, I don't know, get high or drunk or whatever, alone in your bedroom. I, I do not, I don't give a shit. But I told you, you should have called me or anyone. Learn to tame your extroverted stupidity. Of course there are things that I am missing. Things that I will never get to do. People I would love to see. Places I would rather be. But I just don't feel sad. Maybe I'm numb. Or my body is just trying to protect itself. He couldn't just wait at home and put his feet up and learn how to bake fucking banana bread or write a novel or anything besides besides visiting people. All for that hour of socialization where if he had just waited however many months, even years of distancing, he misses out on the rest of his life. Isn't that just hilarious? Unlike the rest of the world, who is mourning over the loss of people who are stolen or susceptible. People who had no say in the matter, who, 
did nothing to deserve it. Who am I mourning for? My therapist asked me today, what would you do in life if you weren't afraid? Does he even make the list? If I was always so afraid to take up space during rehearsal, I wonder how much space I'm allowing myself to take up in my own life. Maybe today I'll start with seeing how much space I can take up in my own room. The only thing I really know in my mind for certain is that everything happens for a reason. I believe that our planet was on its last breath and mankind was not doing anything to help it. So it decided to take matters into its own hands. Earth needed a much deserved break from people's Hi. careless ways. I also believe that people needed a global pandemic to finally stop what they were doing and appreciate everything around them. Time with family, time outside in nature, Hearing the birds chirp really has a different feeling lately. These thoughts comfort me. Comfort really overcomes my sadness, and I love that. Routines like these aren't quite the normal. Stuck in a cycle that's forever repeating, but one that I control is challenging. But my mama always told me, Accomplishment doesn't necessarily come from the big things, rather the small ones. Connection doesn't necessarily come from a hug or kiss, but from a how are you text, or one of those sappy and painfully long phone calls with grandma. Point is, stuck is only something you and I choose to feel. So let's choose not to feel stuck.